Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for Friday, March 15th, 2024. Well, my goodness, quite a reversal yesterday with that whipsaw and some big point moves. It wasn't as bad as it certainly could have been. And this morning, uh, we are once again trying to get a pre-market pump up here in um, our futures. Let's take a look at what happened overnight. First off, um, Asian markets last night were mostly lower, kind of reacting to um, the US uh, data. Hong Kong was actually down the most, the, um, the, the heavy tech index over there. Uh, down the most 1.42%. Shanghai managed to be the only one to squeeze out a positive gain of $16.40 overall. So a little bit of a mix in data, but honestly, um, the sell-off over there wasn't terrible. If we take a look at Europe this morning, Europe is mostly up trying to uh, shake off the U.S. inflation data and uh, close out the week strong. FTSE is the only one that's just marginally lower here at the moment and, ju and just a tiny little bit. Here in the U.S., we've got all of our futures trying to push for an upside open um, at the moment, but please keep in mind this is very early. I'm recording this at about 5.30 a.m. Central Time this morning, so it is um, early for this data. If we take a look at oil this morning, interestingly enough, after a big move to the upside here recently in oil, oil pulling back just a little bit, a uh, tiny bit this morning, uh, down 50 cents. Uh, Brent crude is down 52 cents and natural gas is up just a little over a penny. So trying to hang in there uh, a little bit um, on those prices. If we take a look at our bonds, bonds are really hanging in there as well. Our bond yields, although we tried to, to, to make a, a case um, early on yesterday in the gap up open that the producer price number that came in way hotter than expected was no big deal but throughout the day we continued to see bond yields rising bond meal the bond market says no there is a problem here the stock market is trying to say no there's not a problem here the fed's going to cut rates i don't know who's right but right now uh, the two-year bond is at 4.69 percent and the 10-year bond is at 4.20%, with the 30-year climbing to 4.42%. So a significant increase in bond yields. And that, of course, <clears throat> is having a, a nasty effect on bonds. Bonds are pulling back as a result. And um, the U.S. dollar is strengthening um, as a result. Um, so what does all that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. I think I've got everything gathered up we want to talk about here today. Let's um, take a look at these index charts and see if we can gain a little bit of information about how we might want to approach the market for today. Remember, try to shake off a little bit of bias, and um, let's see what these charts look like. You know, one of the things that I've been hearing from a lot of people is that into these spikes and these reversals that we're seeing in the market, um, folks are trying to trade this pretty heavily. Um, and I understand that because they, they just want to do something. They want to trade. But one of the things that you might be struggling with here in the market quite a bit is just noticing that for quite a period of time, if we eliminate these lows right in here, we really haven't gone anywhere in the diamonds. And I'll show you the other index charts. We're doing an awful lot of consolidating here. And I don't know if this is gonna end up being any kind of a topping pattern or if it's just a rest before we move on up. 
But if you've been struggling in the market where you pick up a, a long trade or even a short trade here uh, and, and you're not getting any follow through, um, you can see why that is the case. If you're losing money in this market because you're struggling back and forth with this chop, um, you know, one of the things we have to do is we have to look at the chart for what it is, not for what we want it to be. And you can see we we'd still have this possibility of a double top high in um, our diamonds with a bearish engulfing candle that came in there yesterday. So um, there is a reason why you may be struggling here in the market. And I understand that desire that I've got to get something to do. I got to trade something. But remember, trading just to be busy is a bad habit. We need to trade to make money. And sometimes um, patience is the thing that we have to exercise to be successful because it's a whole lot easier to make money when your accounts flush with cash. It's not as easy to make money after you've taken, taken a bunch of losses trying to trade in a very, very choppy area of the market. Now, let's take a look at um, what we could uh, could occur today. If the bulls the bulls find inspiration and in holding off of this support, there's every reason to believe. Yesterday we came down there and took a nice hard look at it and then bounced right at the end of the day um, trying to push back up as the dark pool activity came in. So if we can get some bullish activity going in here, maybe pushing up into this range, you'll look right across there, pushing up into there um, about halfway up that that uh, bearish engulfing candle. You'll notice that we did hold on to this trend here as well, that downtrend break. So if those bulls can find that inspiration, pushing up through the middle part of that candle would probably bring those bulls back into the market saying this is just a temporary sell-off. And that may be true. And if we can push on through there, let's look up here just a little bit higher, see if we can push there. And then of course, pushing and breaking out up here would be a big point move to the upside and then blue sky above. Now you will want to um, also consider the downside possibility here. If the bears find something today inspirational to attack, a push down into um, here once again um, would be pretty normal. Um, even a whip in the day could push us down there to retest that area. But if that area were to break, break down below here following that bearish engulfing shooting star pattern up here and possible double top there is that possibility fear could grow and folks might run for the door to protect their capital particularly heading into a weekend so um, if you look right in here there really isn't any good major areas of price support in here we might find a little bit of support right through there off of those little uh, low parts of those candles but that chance that we could dip right on down into here certainly does show up as a possibility now dropping through there is where it would really get serious and it would be a massive point move but it's possible because we have been swinging in such big point moves so watch that carefully our spy if we look at this our spy is in a much different situation here showing bullishness continuing to hold that trend um, notice that we found that support in here off that trend we bounce back up we don't have nearly as bearish a pattern here in the spy as we do in the dow in fact you can't really see a bearish pattern here this is very very bullish now we do have a resistance up here and if those bulls can find that inspiration to push this back up and you can see they're already pumping here in the pre-market first thing we might have to do is pop through that little area to see if we can break through there and if we can push on up from that point then we start looking at this resistance high up here and the possibility of blue sky highs to the upside now on the same the same side of the coin if we take a look at um, if the bears were to find inspiration boy it really wouldn't take much of a push and we fall off that uh, that cliff edge here in the trend and start moving lower breaking down so a little bit of support right in there to be watching and if that were to fail 
then I think uh, we start coming down and testing some of these levels in the chart right through here. Uh, these are those consecutive failures that can bring us back down into this area. Now, it doesn't get ugly. In fact, that that would be a massive pull, pullback, but it really doesn't get too terribly ugly unless we start falling into these uh, gaps, these big gaps that we've left behind. And then we could just, it's like falling into a hole. When we drop into that, you just fall really quickly so we'll want to watch those levels but the good news is is we've got that that possibility of support in here right now the markets are very very convinced that fed's going to cut rates and everything's going to be um, beautiful here with a rate cut i will tell you historically when the fed starts cutting rates the market goes down because it means the fed is losing confidence in the overall market but we'll see we'll see let's take a look at the qqq now our qqq also, if you'll notice in here, here is that nasty, choppy, consolidating zone here in the market. For the, so for those of you that have been tr trying to trade tech in this period, we're getting this whippy, choppy, nasty price action in here. And another reason why you might be finding that it's difficult right now to make much money in the market on any directional trade. Now, that being said, if the bulls can follow through, and you can see they're really pumping here in the pre-market trying to recover yesterday's move, um, if we can push back up into here in the chart and break that resistance, that'll be important. Um, breaking that resistance means that chance that we can push right through here and um, test this, these levels up here and, and then um, all time highs um, could be on the way. And Fridays have been one of those days that that seems to be occurring a lot where we pump it. Um, into the end of the week. So watch that carefully here. It really is going to depend on how that data comes out. And if we take a look at uh, this level right across here, well, that's also going to be fairly easy to achieve if the bears were to attack here in the market. If they decide to push this back down, holding this level is gonna be very, very important because if we fail, well, there's that big hole again right there. Dropping through there, we can move the QQQ down sharply all at once in the market. So watch that closely. And then if we look at our IWM, IWM was largely unimpressed. In fact, where the other indexes were pumping up on big tech um, moves um, yesterday, IWM didn't enjoy that same potential and we ended up dropping down through this area of price support in the chart. So that's going to be one of the first hurdles that we need to recover if the bulls find inspiration today. Try to push this back up and break back through this area. You'll notice that we've broken this upside trend here in the Russell. So little bit of a problem here on that. But if we can push up through here then and prove to hold up here, well, then we can recover in the Russell. However, if those bears, um, and it wouldn't take much effort at this point, if those bears were to engage here and break us back down below this level in here, well, there's a little bit of price support right about in there that we could try and, and hold on um, in the chart if we pop down in here. But I think there's a pretty decent chance if we break that level, well, we're likely going to come down here in this green line that I have in here. Um, I'd have to stretch that across out here a little bit. But you could see that real possibility we dip back down into this congestion area of the chart trying to find some price support. So uh, big point moves are possible to the downside if those bears find a reason to engage. If we take a look at our VIX, our VIX here um, had a pretty good upside move yesterday. We popped up and then at the, the, right at the end of the day, that surge right at the end of the day, the dark pool activity came in and uh, surged us back up or, or pulled us back, surged us up in the index, has pulled back the VIX. But as you can see, we've still got this circumstance in here where we're running in this little upside trend. The market is trying to say, traders are trying to say, there's no problems here, everything is great, bye, 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 bye. 
We'll see if that continues to play out as our VIX continues to creep higher here. Now, if the bears find inspiration today, we'll start looking at these tops right up in here and maybe even up into um, the top side of this channel. If the bulls are inspired today, well, let's see if we can push this on back down, maybe test the low side of that channel. I think anything is possible. If we take a look at our uh, T2122, the four week new high, new low ratio, well, you can see yesterday what we were dealing with. We had the majority of markets or majority of stocks selling off and sold off pretty strongly yesterday. As a matter of fact, even as we gapped up yesterday morning, um, this was moving lower. So it was really kind of a bull trap yesterday to um, suck people in and then the market reversed, pulling the rug out from under everyone. But you'll want to notice here that if the bulls find inspiration, we certainly have plenty of upside opportunity now if those bulls get inspired here. Um, quite a bit of upside opportunity. And it's not uncommon when you push back this hard that you might bounce back up and maybe test the middle of this zone up here around 50% or maybe even push up here a little bit further, catch some of that resistance in the chart. However, if those bears are inspired, you can see it really isn't all that much to ask for this to push on down here toward that bearish reversal zone. And we haven't been down there for a long time to really um, hard test that support area in the chart. So the bears are probably a bit on the hungry side. If they can come up with anything to um, supply them some energy, um, there is a possibility we could push down into that that nasty zone down in here. If we take a look at our uh, T2108, well, our T2108, substantial pullback <clears throat> yesterday, percentage of stocks above the 40 day moving average, showing that pressure that came in all of a sudden here in the market on that nasty whipsaw and, and big point moves as I've been talking about. If the bears find a reason to engage, look for big point moves and there we go. And I continue to talk about big whipsaws as well. And well, there it is right there, that pullback. But this isn't terrible, um, not terrible at all. Remember, one day does not make a trend. So we could reverse this and come right back up here in the chart. Critical level to be watching in here is right around 50%. 50% of the stocks holding above their 40 day moving average. Um, that's a good sign if we can continue to hold up there. If we were to break this down, little fear might come into the market. And we'll want to be watching carefully for that. Our T2107, also pretty substantial pullback yesterday. But once again, I don't think this is terrible. One day does not make a trend. And if you look across here, there's a little bit of price support. So if the bulls can... Um, find anything to engage on today, then we could bounce right back up off of there. No harm coming into the trade. If we were to follow on through to the downside and really um, um, put some pressure there on, on that chart, that's where a little bit of fear might creep up. But so far, I wouldn't worry about that all that much. And then T2101, uh, well, T2101 continues to show us that that breadth is very very weak so even with that big whipsaw in the market yesterday notice that our breadth was hooking over um not a good sign that we're getting these big point moves and we're not following through with market breadth now remember a lot of um a lot of the gyrations that we might be seeing is because um, the big giant corporations um, out here in the tech sector are running into their blackout period. They will soon start slipping into that blackout period where corporate, corporate buybacks have to end. So one of the things we may be seeing in these hops and pops that we're getting in the market is corporate buybacks trying to finish up their activity for the quarter. And then we could really see that breadth de decline here in T twenty one hundred one. It's it's not uncommon as we slip into that um, end of a quarter that we start getting very very choppy as we're waiting for that next season of earnings reports to see if we can continue to support these current prices in um, these stocks. So watch carefully there. If we 
jump back over here and um, how about we take a look at our economic calendar here for today. Now our economic calendar, we've got a few things to be paying attention to here today. Some of it more important than other. Um, Empire State Manufacturing is something that we have largely ignored for a long, long time. Um, nobody seems to care that our manufacturing is not improving here in the United States. As long as tech is working, we don't care about manufacturing. Well, um, con consensus is looking for a negative 0.8 here on Empire State Manufacturing. That would be a decline from the negative 2.4. Um, again, showing us that weakening of the economy. So watch carefully here. But even if this comes in really bad, um, I've got a suspicion that the market will just, nah, don't care. Um, all we care about is tech and AI, and that's all that matters here in the market. Um, if we take a look at um, import um, export prices here, they're looking at import export prices, a decline from 0.8 to 0.2 on those import prices um, year over year. They're looking for a negative 0.7 from a negative 1.3 and export prices looking for a 0.1 versus a 0.8 last time. I don't know why they didn't give us an estimate on the year over year here, but um, that would be um, maybe a little bit um, leaning bearish, but I think once again, we'll most likely ignore um, that number. Um, here in um, we've got um, our industrial production numbers. They're looking for that to improve ever so slightly month over month from a negative 0.1 to 0.0. Um, 0, .0. 0.0 here on the manufacturing output um, that was a negative 0.5, so a little improvement there. Capacity utilization, however, they're suggesting capacity utilization could decline here ever so slightly. So. Um, this is one of those numbers that I think they're they're kind of punting here, like they're not really sure uh, what's going to happen here. A miss here on this number could be more impactful to the market, uh, something they may not be able to, to ignore, um, even if it, come, if it comes in bullish or bearish. And then we've got our consumer sentiment number, and consumer sentiment, they're looking at that coming in at 77.3 from a 76.9. Be careful with this one because one of the things we're starting to see is that consumers is getting a little bit unhappy out there with prices and um, and all of the debt that they're having to run to continue to maintain their households. So watch that carefully. If this were to, cl to decline, that could be bearish for the day. If it holds in here like this, hey, we're, we're in good shape. And they're looking for that um, year over year inflation expectation to remain there at 3.0, despite the fact that we've had two consecutive months of CPI rising and PPI rising. Mm, not the best sign there um, overall. Um, then we've got a Baker Hughes work rig count, which probably nobody's going to pay attention to, despite the fact that oil is moving substantially higher. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar here for today. And guess what, guys? Our earnings calendar really doesn't have much going on today. In fact, the only the only stock that I put on the list for today will report this morning, and that's going to be JBL. That's really the only notable that we have today. And we're going to continue to see these notables um, diminish um, as we push through toward the end of this month. Um, uh, obviously, we're running out of those notables to keep the market moving to the upside. So um, let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, everyone, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. If you find these videos to be useful or helpful, do me that favor, click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment, that helps the channel to grow. Thank you so much for everyone who does take the time to do that. It means a lot to me. Remember, you can also help out the channel a lot by just posting this video link out on your social media feed so other folks have an opportunity to see it, find it. Um, if you enjoy it, someone else might pass it along. And then, of course, 
um, you can support the channel through the Buy Me a Coffee link just below the title of the video. And thank you so much for everyone who does that. I really, really appreciate it. Let's take a look at some of these stocks setting up. And remember, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You need to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful in this market. Um, remember, we're in a very choppy um, area of the market, and we could slip into more consolidation as we're kind of waiting for a next quarter to kick off and see whether or not we're going to have um, uh, good enough numbers to continue to support these prices. So a lot of chop in here could be um, beginning to build um, just simply because of those situations in the blackout period here in the market. Let's take a look um, at some of these charts and um, First off, let's take a look. I've been talking about this BMY. BMY uh, made this big move to the upside and I'm still holding this on this pullback because I'm really looking at turning this into a longer term trade for uh, a hold. Um, and I bought um, contracts that go out to Gen 2025 on this. So we've got a um, w formation here in the chart and this is a pretty typical pretty common thing that occurs we'll pull back and we'll look for some support in here to see if we can hold in here and su support so i'll be watching for that next opportunity maybe in here for that to push on higher i do want to remind everyone that i'm also hedged on this trade so right now my short calls are hedging this pullback and uh, feeling pretty comfortable in the trade just wanted to, to pass that on in case anyone is wondering, well, what are you doing with this? Well, I'm holding it. I'm not too concerned about it, actually, um, at the moment. Um, another, another stock in that same area, take a look at Pfizer. Pfizer has been working this breakout here, breaking this downtrend here in the chart and pushing up. And notice this nice little tight consolidation starting to form right in here, finding this price support area and just holding right there in that area. If we look at our moving averages, um, you can see we're holding above our 50 day and we're giving time for our short term moving averages to start moving up and providing support under this area. So if the buyers were to start to show up here, what I would do is maybe just place a price alert. Don't anticipate this because one of the things you don't want to do is buy something anticipating this is going to pop to the upside. Because if you look back here, how many times have we popped through that area and then just went ahead and failed? So what we need to see is those buyers step up here and really start to push this through. And what that's gonna show us is that institutions are starting to show support in here on the chart. They're suggesting, if that occurs, they're suggesting the stock is too low and there's some value here. And it's also one of those things that we're seeing in this rotation um, that has been I've been talking about here all week in the market is we're starting to see some of these stocks that have been scraping their belly across the bottom of the ocean here um, starting to come back up and I think that's a rotation where we're we're selling out a little bit of the big tech profits and we're reducing risk in that and we're moving into more defensive or more um, stocks that provide um, good opportunity to the upside. So watch that carefully here. Pfizer might be one to be paying attention to. And we can also see that rotation that I'm talking about when we take a look at stocks like Mo Altria here. Holy moly, rocket ship in Altria just ripping to the upside on that break. Now, I'm not going to chase this. No way, shape, or form am I going to chase this. If you're in it, congratulations. But if you um, want to watch a chart like this, just wait for the, the resting pullback. Notice we've had no pullback in this move. It's just a straight up rocket shot. And we're seeing a lot of that right now in the market where when something starts to move, um, there's this massive chase that happens um, in the market. And um, it's not healthy. As a matter of fact, it, it, it will eventually hurt a lot of traders. There's going to be a lot of folks that get hurt if the market starts pulling back. 
but we'll see if uh, this gets any kind of rest or consolidation in here that holds a support level then there'll be an easy opportunity and usually a lower risk much lower risk entry uh, getting into that trade you could also take a look at philip morris philip morris made that big shock shocking move to the upside smacked its head against that resistance pulling back a little bit right here you'll notice that that did break above that 50 and that 200 day moving average so if this were to rest consolidate in here pull back um, hold that establishes an upside trend we may pop on through there could be some good opportunities coming in there and there's a lot of these stocks right now that are showing signs like that take a look at 3m another rocket ship ride here in 3m pushing through gapping up and then continuing to run right up into this resistance here in the chart but now look at this big downtrend break if we can hold a higher low okay if we can hold a higher low look for that next opportunity then in stocks like 3m and there are a bunch of those starting to show up here in the market stocks that are already looking very good and very high out here take a look at teva now teva has kind of disappointed me a little bit in just that it, it it's kind of slipping this trend here at the moment just kind of passing beyond the trend but we're still stuck in this range we're holding support and I'm watching for that opportunity that this may push on through to the upside and continue to stay extend out. I would keep an eye on TEVA. As you guys know, I've been talking about tractor supply. Tractor supply pretty whippy yesterday with that move in the market, but it shook it all off and continued to push on up. So I continue to think um, tractor supply could break right on higher here, uh, maybe push up into this um, channel high in the chart so watch that closely take a look at um, some of these miners out here um, mining um, stocks have been holding up really really well and I'm kind of surprised honestly that we're seeing as much resiliency as we are in some of the precious metals as well but notice here new mining there is your classic head and shoulders pattern all we need to see is we need to see those bulls pushing through popping that area here to the upside can't say that that's going to occur but i would be watching carefully for that if you look at stocks like um Barry gold also having that nice little pattern starting to show up in here there's that shoulder weird looking head but there you go um, another shoulder so if those buyers were to step up and start pushing through um, that little consolidation here to the upside then every reason to believe that we could pop right up in here and start that upside trend and push us right on through in there and if you can look at stocks um, if you want ETFs um, GDX same pattern resting back look for that next opportunity here the junior miners um, gdxj showing bullishness and then of course you can start looking at gold um no, whoops excuse me gld if you want paper gold um, a really strong move to the upside and notice it's not selling off it's really resting as a matter of fact gold is trying to go up this morning so watch that carefully in here i think this needs more consolidation or rest i think we need to pull back or consolidate a bit more but that doesn't you know what i think the market doesn't care about what i think um i would be watching this for that next opportunity if that continues to move um, um you could also look at like um pslv pslv um uh, this is a silver trust this is actually physical silver um, silver has been moving up and you can see coming into some resistance in the chart if we just look at slv you can see we popped in through that little resistance area now we've pushed up here and silver to attack this next area in the chart i think this needs a rest or pullback but watch that carefully here we're seeing precious metals showing lots and lots of strength um, by the way, PHYS, PHYS is physical gold. 
um, if you want um, something in that area, a little bit of rest consolidation where you're actually owning physical gold, not paper gold, like you do in GLD and SLV. You can actually hold physical gold. Um, go to those websites and check it out. And then um, we don't want to um, miss out on um, any of the other uh, metal moves. Take a look at copper. Boy, there is talk that of, and we've known this for some time, there is a major supply problem here with copper. EVs are sucking up all the copper and um, well literally we're gonna have to dig up some continent to find enough copper to supply all those EVs but you know that's one of those unfortunate circumstances that no one wants to talk about in the EV industry but um, in this um, in this move to the upside and that major breakout look for a rest or pullback here in FCX for that next opportunity, you can see it in SCCO, big pop here, just zooming um, to the upside here on that move. And if, for example, the Fed does cut rates and we diminish the strength of the dollar, these are gonna go higher. Um, so watch that carefully. A little rest or pullback sets up an opportunity. Take a look at aluminum. Aluminum also setting up in a possible buy point. Nice little pop to the upside, resting out here on support, out to trend. Look for that next opportunity, particularly if the dollar weakens. So I ran this video a little bit long. I apologize, got a lot of things to talk about in this market right now. So I wanna wish you all a fantastic day. I wish you great, um, great um, success in your trading today. Just be uh, very cognizant of the positions that we are in and that choppiness that we're seeing here in the market. Be careful not to have your account just chewed, chewed apart by this whipsaw and whippy range bound moves that we're getting on these. Well, big point swings um, can can really damage an account um, pretty, pretty quickly. So be careful there. Have a wonderful day. And more importantly, wanna wish you all a fantastic weekend with your family. Be safe. We'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. Wish you all the very best.